Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about lithium effects on thyroid gland and I'll be addressing both the good and the bad effects. Okay, sit back and let's go. Lithium is very useful in psychiatry disorders, particularly for mood stabilization. It's useful in the face of mania, bipolar depression, and for prophylaxis in bipolar. The lithium, very effectful in handling some psychiatric disorders, will have some effects on the thyroid gland. So, the thyroid hormone secretion could be inhibited by lithium. Later on, that could lead to hypothyroidism, and that is the most clinical effects of lithium on thyroid gland. When the hormone secretion is inhibited, will be treated to hypothyroidism, mostly. Goiter could develop, and there is the likelihood of thyroid autoimmunity or thyroid autoimmune thyroiditis. Hyperthyroidism could develop in some, but not very common. There is a likelihood of decreased liver deordination, and you can understand what that will mean. Before administering lithium to that woman or that man, please let's have physical examination for thyroid-related pathology. And of course, in those already taking lithium, let's have the physical examination on lithium toxicity as well. So physical examination for thyroid pathology and lithium toxicity. Then, before administering lithium, let's have thyroid function test done. The T4, the T3, the TSH, and anyone already on lithium, let's continue with thyroid function tests every 6 to 12 months for as long as the individual will be on lithium. We should assay the anti thyroid peroxidase antibody. And we can grab the ultrasound probe, check the anterior neck, looking for what? For goiter, in form of goiter screening. And regularly, regularly, and I repeat, regularly, we should monitor lithium level place because I'm really scared of lithium toxicity. When it comes to goiter, as far as lithium effects on thyroid gland is concerned, that will be the most common abnormality. And it is occurring in about 50% of patients taking lithium for a long period of time, particularly the women. In this case, there will be decreased T43 and increased thyroid stimulating no more with decreased thyroid aldine uptake and sometimes increased uptake. That's likelihood of increased thyroid gland size. And there will be alteration in the function of insulin-like growth factor. Also, alteration in the function of tyrosine kinase proliferation and beta catenin signaling. We can be dealing with diffuse goiter or it might be nodular goiter. And all these will be taking place in the first two years of treatment. It might be earlier in some individuals. And the treatment here, I will not go into details of that because I have a separate presentation on goiter on my channel already published. Please check that out. You'll be able to get full treatment of goiter there. Hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism will occur in about 50% of patients taking lithium. 
It may occur with goiter. It may also occur without goiter. Usually, we may be dealing with subclinical apothyroidism here, but few patients on lithium will come down with overt hypothyroidism. And all this will be taking place in the first two years of treatment and maybe earlier in some. It is more in women greater than 45 years and the rate of having apothyroidism while on lithium will increase with age. Hypothyroidism treatment while on lithium. You can check my channel for full presentation on hypothyroidism treatment. Don't know yet published, but it will be published in the next few days. Note, it is not compulsory to discontinue lithium here, but we must have that full conversation with the attending psychiatrist who had prescribed the lithium. Okay. The affected patient on lithium now having apothyroidism cannot be on tyrosine indefinitely. Then what are we going to do? Therefore, we need to do tyro function tests and note the value of TSH. If TSH is below normal, then we have to tail off and discontinue later. Let there be a resting period for one to two months and assay the thyroid stimulating hormone again. If thyroid stimulating hormone is rising above normal, then we have to give the level tyrosine again. Let me repeat. The full treatment of hypothyroidism is not right here. That will be published in the next few days. So once you have this presentation, Check my channel in the next few days. There will be full treatment of apothyroidism. Okay? But here, it is not compulsory to discontinue lithium. Okay? But we need to have that conversation with the psychiatrist who prescribed the lithium in the first place. However, even if there's agreement or no agreement on discontinuation or not, tyrosine is the drug of choice in treating apothyroidism, right? The patient cannot be on that medication indefinitely. Okay? Then what are we going to do? We will assay the tyrosine stimulating hormone level when we are doing our tyrosine function test, right? If it is below normal, then we have to tail off the level tyrosine and later discontinue it. So after one month, some will go for two months, we'll assay the tyrosinating hormone again. If the value is rising above normal, then we'll pick our level tyrosine again, that is T4, and administer. So we have to titrate the value of TSH with the level tyrosine. Chronic thyroiditis. It is unknown if lithium can induce thyroid autoimmunity. We don't, we don't know that for sure. But it is strongly believed that thyroiditis is probably in those with underlying chronic autoimmune thyroiditis. Let me explain. If you find a patient taking lithium and later on develops thyroiditis, it is likely that the individual had underlying chronic autoimmune thyroiditis before. Even if you have not picked chronic autoimmune thyroiditis, you just check for all other autoimmune conditions or disorders like sarcoidosis, like uh, pernicious anemia, systemic lupus erythematosus. You know, check for all those. If you are able to pick one, 
because the problem is once you are able to make the diagnosis of an autoimmune disorder you are likely going to find more of autoimmune disorders so if that is the case and the person is now on lithium then it's not surprising that the individual will come down with chronic thyroiditis lithium can also enhance the activity of B lymphocytes hyperthyroidism lithium increases the chances of having hyperthyroidism particularly if an individual is on name on long-term basis hyperthyroidism here is likely going to be associated with painless thyroiditis toxic nodular goiter or graves disease thyrotoxicosis may be the case in younger females more than males the treatment is determined by the cause lithium in the face of treatment of thyroid disorders well this is not a first line medication in handling thyroid disorders but very useful in the face of hyperthyroidism you can give between 600 to 900 milligrams per day it will inhibit thyroid hormone secretion that is why it might be helpful in hyperthyroidism but mark my word not first line medication and we don't even prescribe it for this purpose okay is useful in those allergic to iodine and also in those intolerant to thionamide so here is the problem you have hyperthyroidism in this patient and this patient is allergic to iodine this patient is intolerant to thionamide but all the clinical symptoms of hyperthyroidism is right here then discuss with you know, the pharmacists uh, and other physicians around you can try later lithium increases the effectiveness of radio iodide some call radio iodine it can also increase the effectiveness of radio iodide if given if given five days before and five days after okay but lithium toxicity is a subject of concern Entyrodactomy preoperatively lithium can cause decrease in serum thyroid hormone concentrations and postoperatively it can increase clinical outcome in thyroid cancer lithium can prolong 131 iodide retention by thyroid tissue it is not advisable to be using lithium as an adjuvant therapy here please don't quote me anywhere i'm not suggesting that you should be using lithium in the case of all thyroid cancers whether papillary medullary or whatever i'm not prescribing it here now but it can do that work okay okay finally be careful about the toxicity of lithium what i've done before now is just to bring it to the awareness of all of us in medical practice that that patient taking lithium for mood disorder can actually be having big problem with the thyroid gland and thyroid bones that is all i'm out to do here I am not an agent selling lithium or promoting you know any path of it or scaring people away from using it. I've just come here to present the facts. So be careful about the toxicity of lithium. Physical examination is necessary. I'm repeating myself because it is necessary, right? 
It's necessary to have physical examination for thyroid-related pathology and lithium toxicity even before you start the medication. Thyroid function tests must be done before we prescribe lithium. And we have to repeat thyroid function tests every six to 12 months for as long as the individual will be on lithium. Antithyroid perosidase antibody should be acid. We can use ultrasound to check the anterior neck for goiter as a means of screening for goiter. And lastly, regularly monitor the lithium level because of the therapeutic index. With that, I've come to the end of this unusual presentation of the relationship between lithium and thyroid gland, good and bad. Thanks for listening. Kindly remember to share and subscribe. I appreciate it. By the way, more presentations will be published on hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. I published a lot already, seven of them on thyroid gland. Check my channel. Thank you.